Welcome or welcome back to the channel. Today is day 228 of playing chess every day until 2000 Dilo. We're sitting at 1753. Let's find an opponent. And we get a 1774 and e4, Cairo Khan, of course. Two knights attack. So we're going to go here. And it looks like we're going to get the oh no, my queen variation. <laughs> so he goes queen back. I believe this is the move now, or this, one of those two moves. I always forget at this point. This is where I forget. But I think we go here, if takes, we go here. No, takes, here, takes. Why do I always forget here? So silly. I'm pretty sure we just play this. B5. And he takes, of course. And now we need to remember our theory. Pretty sure it's just here. Takes. There, there. This is wrong. I just... Uh, why am I having a hard time remembering? This. There's discovery attacks. Here, takes. And then here. Yeah, I think it's here. It's gonna take, and then I go here. We will have to review this. <laughs> Once again. We can't actually take here. Okay, so he goes for that. So we're gonna go here. We're attacking the bishop. So if there's a discovery attack, we can just take. So probably slide back. And then we can go here. It slides back. Now I think this is the move. We attack this once again. So he has to protect. Queen here. We can go here. Currently down two pawns. But we should get a piece back, I'm pretty sure. It's pretty scary though. <laughs> I'm not even going to lie to you. So queen here. Bishop here. Can I take? I think I can take. And my camera has died. My opponent has played queen f3, protecting the knight. So I'm thinking I can just go here. And then the only square is this to protect, but then it's covered. So I can go here. So I'm pretty sure this is fine. Here, here. That's probably a problem. Yeah, because I, I really need to get this piece back. If I go here, I... No, there's not that move. Here, takes, takes. I think the the real problem is that that's pinned. So here, if he tries to discover anything, I can take, maybe? No. Here, if this, we just take. It also gets out of the pin, because he can move this, and then the queen attacks here. So let's go ahead and attack the knight once more. I don't think he has a way of protecting it once more. So I should just get the piece. Should. I guess the knight does have one safe square which is here which i completely overlooked but this is still attacked so offers a queen trade wow really this is very interesting so if i were to take he takes and if i take i take here then he just takes and then i can take here so i don't really think that does much and if takes takes we can still take take and take could also just develop but I feel like we just take the queen trade here. I don't see why not. Pawn takes. Oh, he wants this pawn. But at the end of this, my rook protects that. And now we're still up a pawn. Attacking this one, he could take. But yeah, and now let's just develop and castle. He's going to start pushing these pawns. Not really afraid of that. Let's just castle. I feel like that's just a poor move. I go here. What's he going to do this? Okay, we're going to lash out. Trade more pieces, probably. Oh, wow. Striking back. He wants a big center. So I can just move the knight. I could just take this pawn. And if takes, then I take here. Takes. If moves, this bishop's protected. Oh, but if I go here, he can take. But then I just get here. So I think I can just take this pawn. Or maybe maybe that's actually a huge mistake. Because the rook can actually defend. Oops. Yeah, that was a mistake, I think. He takes, though. And yeah, I think I'm just going to slide back here. I feel pretty good about my position. Because now I can play, like, king h8. And then put the rook on h8 and just attack. Maybe I don't want to do that, though. But his pawn structure is kind of busted. Castles. I don't see a way that he can protect this other than going here. Which just seems way too passive, if you ask me. So let's attack the pawn. And he can't actually go there because of this. What's the idea there? I don't really understand what he's trying to do with that. Maybe just keep safeguarding this pawn. Or maybe he wants to just double up on this. But we're going to take. 
That's exactly what he wants. So I could take another pawn, but is that getting too greedy? Maybe. I do have to worry about checkmate patterns here. His back rank being a little bit exposed. I could just bring the king up one square. Could also try to trade this. Here he probably goes here. And then I'm threatening stuff like this. Let's try to trade this piece off. Because I didn't like that after he takes, I take, he takes. I didn't like that the the rook was seeing the bishop that is unprotected. This would be a mistake because takes, takes, takes. So he has to respond to this. And he trades. So now I have a check to pick up this pawn. So takes. I think this is just golden. Like takes here, take this pawn, and then we're just like threatening to take that. I think it's pretty GG's here. So let's take the pawn. He can give a check. It'll just slide up. Now he protects that pawn. I think it's time to get the king active. He's going to have a hard time like doing anything with his pieces, basically. We can do that, because he can't move this pawn. I have a check here. Does it do anything? Not really. I mean, I would love to get up in there. So maybe I go here. If he does this, then I just have check. He goes here, and that's a problem. So we don't want that. Maybe we try to push this pawn and split these apart. So let's go there. I guess maybe check if he went there, then check to pick up this pawn. Check here is kind of running into the same thing. But then this, and I gotta move. Hmm. So he wants to go here, and then I'd be forced to go here. Is this an issue? I can't slide back, so I kind of, kind of, kind of an issue. Maybe we need to reposition our knight to try and go here. And now we're threatening to fork the pawns, because if he pushes, then we take. Here, does he have this? Potentially. I mean, I feel like we just come all the way back. Go here, or maybe we just go here. But if I go here, he's gonna go here. I don't like that. So let's put the rook here, just so that he doesn't have this move. His only counterplay right now is to promote this pawn. And I'm threatening to win this pawn now. I mean, I am with this either way, but this is a little bit more forcing. Okay, so there's the move. He wants to stop me from coming back to this rank. So let's calculate. If I go here, here, takes. I can't return, but I can just push the pawn. And he's not going to be in time to really stop me from doing that. Yeah. We're going to take the pawn. He's going to attack me. Actually, he can't attack me, so... That's golden. Let's just come back here. If I go here, I'm threatening check, and then probably this, actually. He wants to go here. I don't really want to allow that. Here, we might go here. Then we're threatening this. But if I go here, this happens, and my opponent resigns. <laughs> okay, so let's take a quick look at that. I played with a 95.1. My opponent played with an 86.5. Opening went very well and this isn't the correct move but taking i knew was a mistake and i missed a move or queen there is better taking's wrong you have to go back because of this move so we found all the right moves and we win a piece and now it was just pretty much clean up from here Boom, boom, boom. And yeah, my opponent resigns. There's, yeah, that was just a phenomenal game by me. And my opponent played well. He just kind of fell into a little trick at the beginning of the game. I had a performance ELO of 2,500 versus his 2,100. All right, instead of finding a second opponent, we actually took a little break and we were chatting with one of our fellow YouTubers, Franz Luray. If you have not checked them out check them out we played three games and for the rest of the video we're gonna recap those games it's pretty interesting franz is in 1900 he's a little bit stronger than i am quite a bit stronger 19 1700 yeah you know but uh anyways so let's go through them i'm probably gonna go through quite quickly it's more of like a i'm telling you what the game was rather than we're analyzing it i might look at some little bits here and there but yeah, so we got a Karo Khan fantasy variation. You guys know if you watch the channel, I don't like to play. Oh, you didn't see anything. Uh, if you guys have been watching me, you know that in the fantasy variation, we don't see them much. 
but when we do, we like to play this E5 line. And basically what we're going for is we're trying to gambit to both pawns and get this. Because if they try to protect this knight, they can actually just lose. Boom, boom, boom. And no, I'm not really expecting 1900s to just fall for this quick trap. But it's more so just to take them out of their prep. So, I mean, he already makes an inaccuracy. Usually people take this way, but, you know, either way is taking. This gets me out of my prep, so we just continue. And now I pin that knight up, which is just a mistake because he can take the pawn, but he doesn't. He just develops. I would probably develop as well. And now I give him the pawn once again. And, yeah, I mean, it, the computer hates all this because just a free pawn and then I finally take attacking this and he can take in multiple ways so he takes and now we give this check because I was thinking oh we got two attackers here but uh, he can simply just go back with the bishop and now my queen is a little bit misplaced so I slide the queen over here because it was attacked he slides the queen up he's gonna castle long so we castle short he castles long only move in the position apparently now we slide the rook behind the d5 pawn and he goes there, which is a miss because he can go here attacking the knight, apparently. But he goes there and then we play d4, trying to kick the knight. This is actually a very sneaky move because if I were to take here, we lose the queen. And I actually didn't see that at first. I was a little bit afraid. But anyways, we just go all the way back. Apparently we're supposed to protect the queen here and go into this actually i didn't even consider but it makes sense because now he just gets to take the pawn and it's just a big trade in the center and he's just up a pawn his pieces are a lot more coordinated i guess he's not up a pawn he's up yeah just a pawn he goes there i give a check then i go there maybe trying to push some pawns is a little bit better Oh, it wanted this. It wanted a3 or a6 because the pawn is just hanging. And I forgot that it was hanging. So we trace down into a completely winning end game. And I don't really think we need to look at anything else. This is how it goes. He promotes. I guess it could be a little bit interesting here. He goes here. He sacks the rook. I take. He takes my last pawn. And then I run the king. But... He cuts my king off with his king, sacks the knight, and there's no getting that pawn. So, yeah, he ends up checkmating me with a queen, and that was the first game. So, he's 1-0 on me. Actually, I think we've played four games. Am I missing a game? I don't know. He played with an 85.5 here. I played with a 74. Performance elos were 2100 and 1850. Ah, uh, yeah, we played four games. The first game ended in a draw which I actually had a brilliant move, apparently, which is nice. It was the Grand Prix attack. So Franz is a Sicilian player, and I'm a Grand Prix attack player. So we go into this, and yeah, I get my big old attack here. Bring the bishop in. I take, which is a mistake. I should have moved the knight first, but, you know, I just do that after. Then he goes there. I take. I jump the knight in. He goes back. And wow, it's actually plus four here. I kick the knight, and then I sacrifice the rook for the knight. King takes. This is a miss. Yeah, okay. I was saying to him, too, in the game, because we were talking on Discord, after I made this move right here, after he just went back with the king, I said to him, I was like, ah, I probably should have went rook f1 check first. And apparently there's actually just a checkmate here. King takes... And it's mate in four. If he goes back, we have mate in one. Oh my gosh, wow. He has to go here. And then we sacrifice the rook. He takes queen here, e5, and then checkmate in the center of the board. That would have been a very nice find. But uh, we just took here. We're still a little bit better. And then we're not so much better. I traded down. I was looking at this move, but I thought that after this... We were just going to be trading everything anyways. So I didn't really see a point in going into that. So I just exchanged. I used way too much time on that move. I used almost like two and a half minutes. 
and then he jumps here, gives me this perfect knight, and then he's allowing me just so much play. But I'm not taking advantage, and he creates a little bit of counterplay himself. And I get in, he gobbles a couple pawns, and I'm down to 15 seconds here, so there's not like, like I'm just under major time pressure. And then we go there, and we take. Why did we do that? Um, oops, you gave up a rook. Oh, yeah. Why did I do that? He, he allowed me to promote. Um, and then we actually just gobbled everything up and went into a draw. And he actually allowed my queen through, but I didn't have enough time to checkmate. So that was a crazy game. I played with a... 72.6% accuracy, and his was 68. 1700 performance elo, and 1550 for him. And so he's one and a half to my half, and we have two more games left. So in this game, we got a copycat Vienna game. If you're a regular viewer, you know I love this. You know, we go queen g4, queen comes out, and then we hit him with this, and he blunders immediately. He doesn't know the theory here. And yeah, so we just move the king out of the way. He goes back. I was thrown off by this whole bishop thing because I'm so used to people playing queen takes, but he goes back. We go here and we take that rook. We kind of solidify everything. This is a little bit of a mistake, but I wanted to just trade material. He goes here. He's trying to trap my queen. My queen feels very unpleasant. I play rook to f3 because I want this because I want to go save my queen that's what I'm trying for so he goes here with the check I go here so that there's no checks with the knight and then he goes here and he went there because I was just going to play this next move if he didn't so he trades it off and then tries to create a little bit of counterplay it was funny right here I played this and I just had to go back because there was nothing. So we just double up. And then I sacrifice the knight so that I have a little bit of counterplay here. Get the rooks in. And then, yeah, I mean, check. He has to go there. Then we can just take, take with check. And then we can go behind, attack the knight while my bishop's attacked. And if he takes, I'm more than happy to go into this because I'm down with, or I'm up material. So he just moves, and then I centralize the bishop. And he hangs his knight here and resigns. So I had a... No, I had an accuracy of 88.6 versus his 79.8. I mean, I'm all booked up in this, this opening. He didn't, you know... He didn't really know the theory, so... I had a performance yield of 2200 versus his 1450. And we are now 1.5 to 1.5. We had to play a tiebreak. This game is almost 80 moves and we get e4 the Cairo Khan and this time it's not fantasy he plays an exchange which I'm a little bit more familiar with but it's still one of those things that I'm not like the most familiar with uh so he goes he attacks my bishop I just take that or chop that as Fran says if any of you guys have watched him so we just keep developing goes there i have to protect the rook or the the knight once more because if i don't protect he's threatening to take take and then take then we just trade those bishops off i'm here he goes in he's threatening to take the pawn because this is pinned so we castle he takes i take he takes the pawn but that just allows my rook in and he takes another pawn which allows me to go attack the queen with tempo and then I'm going to be able to go here. So he just moves out of the way and then we take. And some of you guys might be thinking like, oh, your back rank's super exposed. It is. But we always have queen here or rook back to b8. So I wasn't really afraid, but I blunder. I blunder here because he has check. And picking up the, the knight. But in the game, he plays check, queen back. He takes, I take, and for some reason, I was a little bit confused here on why he didn't take this, but I mean, he decided not to go for that, and we take, and then his knight goes there, and this is just 
a pretty favorable position for black if I can't if I say so myself. I mean, I got a nice knight here. My rook's on the second rank, controlling everything. There's an isolated pawn, which means there's a weakness. His knight's a bit loose. My king can always just run up. So he goes here to protect the knight. And then I play h5 because I was kind of afraid that if I didn't play h5, he was going to like play king here or king here. I guess king here because this is illegal. And try to kick this away. So if he were to move his king instead of the knight, I was just going to play h4. Solidify this in. Now we give a check just to simplify down. You know, go into this. Because I knew that if I took more pieces off the board, I was just better. So that's what we went for. He attacks, and then we go to the open file, and he just starts slashing out with his pawns. And now, this was a little bit scary, you know, all these pawns coming down. But I wasn't really afraid of the check because I could just go here. And if I have to give up a couple pawns, it's not the end of the world because I'm going to win this one and both of these. And then be left with a few others. So I take, he gives a check, I move over, check again. I take the outside one. The reason why I didn't take here, and maybe this is very, very minor but was just because after takes, takes, I didn't like that my king gets stranded on the edge of the board. So I took this one first so that after he takes, I can take here, and when he takes, I can move my king this way, and it doesn't get stuck on the edge of the board, for anybody that was wondering. So now it's king and rook versus king and rook and two, and it's move 36, and I said this was almost an 80 move game. He made me grind this out. So, obviously, I don't have perfect technique, and we all know that one of my weaker points is my ad games. I'm getting better, and this is the kind of practice that I need. So, I appreciate him actually allowing me to continue with this game, and this is how it went. Kind of move up, and right here, I block with the rook, and then I push. And now, he gives another check, and I'm not really so sure how to make forward progress to be honest so i have to just bring my king over because i was i didn't want to like give a check and then allow his king to come here and always pressure this because that's a good way to freeze your pawns so he goes there and it's main two. Oh, i missed main two what's the main two rook there and then just checkmate oh wow i was actually thinking of like this kind of maneuver because i did realize that the pawns you know control all of this and I was thinking maybe I can win the rook, but okay, I missed that. So I just simplify down. I, from this position, after I played this check, I saw that if he goes here, we have check and I just promote, right? So I knew that he was gonna have to go here. And I saw after check there, takes, takes, that I have king here and there's no way to stop this pawn. So that's exactly what I do. And yeah, now we do that sweet little queen walk and we proceed to checkmate him. And for now, we're up two and a half to one and a half against friends. It was a lot of fun to play with him. And if you're watching this, keep grinding, brother. We'll have another rematch someday. And if you haven't checked him out, check him out. He's hilarious. Um, yeah, no, he, he's very entertaining. And he's very good at the game. So in this game, I had an 87.9% accuracy versus his 79. And our performance helos were 2200 for myself and 1800 for him. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow.